Hi, good morning. <clears throat> Today I will be talking on some of the uh, multiple choice questions from the systemic microbiology which are useful for NEET examination. Please observe. A four year old player is suffering with pain in his right leg and right upper thigh. The temperature is 2 naught sorry 102 degrees for heat x-ray of the femur shows eroded the periosteum suggestive of osteomyelitis blood culture yields gram positive cocci the most likely etiological agent is even the answer has been given already that is c staphylococcus aureus <coughs> but here we have to sort out why not other three or the answers the first one is if you see this uh, staphylococcus, the staphylococcus, uh, uh, the three important species are there. One is uh, uh, coagulase, uh, coagulase, uh, uh, what do we call it, so coagulase positive staphylococci, and others are coagulase negative staphylococci. So in this coagulase negative staphylococci, we have two, one is saprophyticus and number one, two is Epidermidis, epidermidis. These are the another species of staphylococci. So this is normal flora of the human skin and respiratory tract and also GIT tract. But whereas the staphylococcus aureus is a nasal carrier, nasal carriage is maintained, and it's a pathogen. It also occurs in 20 to 50 percent of the humans. So abscesses are the typical lesions of uh, Staphylococcus aureus is a very common. Uh, they normally are followed by small injuries, and from any one focus, organisms may enter the blood stream and lymphatics to spread to other parts of the body. So it's response. It may responsible for osteomyelitis. This is a possibility for the production of osteomyelitis, and. Uh, the primary uh, focus is generally in a terminal blood vessels of the metaphysis of the long bone which may lead to necrosis of the bone and chronic separation chronic separation and that's what we are seeing here and if you see the other organism like listeria monocytogenes that is the gram positive cocci and it's uh, mainly transmitted through the unpasteurized milk and to unpasteurized milk but here there's not it is not showing any kind of such thing and another one is streptococcus pneumonia which is primarily it's a primarily respiratory pathogen it's primarily a respiratory pathogen and uh, it's an important uh, uh, causes for the important central nervous system uh, CNS related uh, disease among the children among the children so in this case this is a kind of uh, um, the damage wound damaged uh, secondary to the damage to the skin so this here the answer would be the staphylococcus aureus which is known pathogen and the pathogen of relevance which of the following is not correct about the staphylococcal food poisoning see this you know that the staphylococca is responsible for the food poisoning by producing the introtoxin uh, af and here the this toxin is a preformed toxin and because the foodstuffs which are uh, left at uh, room temperature for a long time like milk and meat products and there the bacteria will grow and produces the toxin and this toxin is known as preformed toxin and this preformed toxin it's all through any signs of spoilage in the food and once we consume the clinical manifestations will appear within one to six hours in the form of vomiting in the form of vomiting and diarrhea vomiting and the diarrhea the severe form and severe nausea also will be there so these are sorry, nausea also will be 
there in this particular case. So if you see here, the not correct point here is, is incubation period like 24 to 48 hours is not correct. The correct incubation period is 1 to 6 hours maximum, right? Newborn has temperature of the 103 degrees Fahrenheit. Blood culture grows uh, positive, gram positive, cocci in chains. This is most likely to be uh, which of the following. So you have to remember the, a newborn baby is suffering with high grade fever and the blood culture shows gram positive cocci in chains. In chains, one could be the reason. And if you see here, the answer here we will take as uh, B, that is uh, group B streptococcus, it's especially streptococcus, streptococcus A galactia, A galactia. Then we will see why. See, the most of the human infections caused by the streptococci involve the group A organisms, right? That is streptococcus A group. Then group B streptococci are members of the female genital tract uh, and the important cause of neonatal and meningeal, men, uh, men, what you call uh, neonatal sepsis and uh, meningitis. The group B streptococci, the best example is streptococcus agalactia, usually present in uh, female genital tract uh, as commensal. And they are usually beta hemolytic. Even though they belongs to B group, they are beta hemolytic and uh, hydrolyze hyporate. They can hydrolyze hyporate hydrolysis is possible. Hypor hyporate hydrolysis also can be done. And the positive response to the CAMP test. CAMP test is one more test is there. That's CAMP, Christie, Atkins, Munch and Peterson uh, test is there. That's CAMP test. That CAMP test will become positive for this organisms and detection of infection and prompt antimicrobial treatment necessary because the infections may become life-threatening and that's about the step group A and group B streptococcus. A third option is salmonella. This salmonella is a gram negative bacilli. It mainly causes for the <coughs> enteric fevers and some of the salmonella species causes for uh, gastroenteritis or intestinal disease. So it's not related to this one. And last one is the streptococcus pneumoniae. <coughs> These streptococcus pneumonia organisms are important in meningitis cases in children, young children especially, <coughs> but are more frequently seen in <coughs> diplococci forms rather than the long chains. They are seen like diplococci like this, but uh, like two, two like this, but not in the chains, the big chains. Okay. So that's the reason why the answer would be the B, that is group B, streptococci. Then the fourth one is uh, a three year old is diagnosed with bacterial uh, meningitis. Cerebrospinal fluid grows out gram positive cocci in short chains and pace. Most likely causative agent is. <clears throat> Here the, we have the four options. The option has been picked up as streptococcus pneumoniae. So streptococcus pneumoniae is the answer. So the three years age group you have to remember or well, diagnose the bacterial meningitis this is a disease. So the finding is gram positive cocci in short chains and also the pace. So what it could be? <coughs> it's always based on the morphology. First, I would like to go to the streptococcus pneumonia. Streptococcus pneumonia is the right answer. And again, we will go for discussion. Uh, streptococcus pneumonia is responsible for uh, 10 to 20 percent of the meningitis cases in children. In children. And <coughs> Neisseria meningitis <coughs> ranges, of course, not given here. Neisseria meningitis will be ranges from 20 to 40 percent. Neisseria meningitis causes for 20 to 40 percent of the 
meningitis cases whereas hemophilus influenza may be involved in 40 to 60 percent 40 to 60 percent of the infections and group A, uh, B, so group A and B streptococci, group A and means uh, streptococcus pyogenes and group B means streptococcus elagalacti, both also associated with uh, 2 to 4 percent of meningococcal, men, sorry, uh, 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 meningitis cases. And uh, if you see the Staphylococcus aureus, this Staphylococcus aureus usually produces the meningitis followed by injury that too in adults. <coughs> so, with this background, by seeing the three years old boy, you see the boy is in a three years old aged boy, bacterial meningitis, gram positive cocaine, short chains and pairs. So, always in, you, know, you have to think in terms of streptococcus pneumoniae. Because they are gram positive cocci arranged in small chains and pairs. If that is an elderly age or any history of trauma or post operative case, and also the uh, uh, bacterial morphologies, uh, uh, groups in nature, then we can go for Staphylococcus aureus. So, here the answer is Streptococcus pneumoniae. following is true regarding meningitis with streptococcus pneumoniae uh, then here i would look i would like to go uh, with the answer b that is concentration of antibiotics in csf would be 10 times of my, my min, uh, minimum inhibitory concentration uh, results given by the laboratory report and why we will see because pneumococci are sensitive to antimicrobial drugs early in the treatment, usually results in rapid recovery. So, they always they cause for rapid recovery. They always rapid recovery followed by antibiotic therapy. So, antibody response that is uh, humoral response seems to play a diminished role today. Today means, and means at the time of uh, this thing it will be diminished. So, penicillin is the drug of choice usually. The penicillin is uh, drug of choice. Penicillin is drug of choice for this kind of cases. But 5 to 10 percent of the isolates in the uh, abroad like United States are penicillin resistant. They are penicillin resistant uh, uh, cases also seen. And 20 percent are moderately resistant um, uh, moderately resistant to this uh, uh, antibiotic agent. <clears throat> so, resistance to uh, cephalosporins and uh, tetracyclines and uh, erythromycin has been demonstrated, although pneumococci remains susceptible to vancomycin. Uh, so, in reference to penicillin therapy, one rule of thumb is to aim for concentration of 10 times of MIC in the CSF. 10 times of MAC in the CSF. So, if you get the MAC report something 4 or 8 something like that and you have to give 10 times to that particular uh, drug dose. So, concentration of antibiotics should be maintained uh, uh, maintained in this much in the CSF because of the resistant to even cephalosporins, tetracyclines and erythromycin. Right? And uh, cephalosporins always um, effective and always is not effective but sometimes they are also resistant and penicillin is always effective but sometimes nearly uh, 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 nearly 10 to 15 percent of these cases are resistant to penicillin so not always and resistance is not increasing uh, in uh, streptococcus pneumonia this is also a wrong answer the resistance for the antibiotic agents are being increased among the streptococcus pneumonia also during an emergency surgery, uh, a 60 year old male is found to have severe peritonitis and perforated colon. Foul smelling cloudy peritoneal fluid is collected. <coughs> Subsequent uh, analysis reveals the growth of black pigmented colonies on Bactrides bile esculin agar. No growth is detected in the presence of Canamycin, 
cholestin or vancomycin which of the following microorganism is most likely involved in this case one is actinomyces israeli number uh, two is uh, bacteroids frigilis three is uh, c is clostridium difficile and the fourth one is enterococcus faecalis i would like to go with uh, the option b that is bacteroid fragilis because these are the normal inhabitants of bubble and other sites these are normally uh, seen in bubble in bubble and um, normal stool contains uh, uh, large number of these bacteria uh, fragilis uh, and as a result they are very important to anaerobes that can cause human infections so members of the uh, bacteria fragilis are most commonly isolated uh, from infections associated with contamination um, contamination uh, uh, associated with contamination uh, so by the contents of uh, by by the by the contents of uh, the colon while doing surgeries or any other procedures where they may cause uh, separation for example peritonitis after the bowel injury so here in case of uh, uh, bowel injury you can see here the colon fluid is collected in colon perforated uh, colon this perforated colon may result in uh, the case in the form of peritonitis peritoneal fluid is collected no this is nothing but a perforitis and uh, <clears throat> classification is based on uh, colonial and biochemical features and all uh, characterized uh, chain fat i mean cha, uh, characteristic uh, short chain um, fatty acid patterns in uh, gas chromatography the short chain fatty acids also contribute to the foul smelling odor um, emanating from the wound in the above case so this is not only based on uh, this one by even by doing the uh short chain fatty acid uh, patterns in the gas chromatography we can identify this as a causative agent so actinomyces israeli of course produces wound infections in the and also the mycetoma it causes for mycetoma mainly on the skin and subcutaneous tissue clostridium difficile responsible for antibiotic uh, associated uh, diarrhea and the enterococcus faecalis mainly causes for wound infections it mainly causes for wound infections and also the urinary tract infections urinary tract infections both of them are usually multi r forms multi r forms these are all main common things by enterococcus faecalis but not associated with uh, colonic surgeries or intra abdominal surgeries so in the intra abdominal surgeries the common agent associated with is bacteroids fragilis following is the treatment of choice to control the severe peritonitis followed by emergency abdominal surgery so what to do followed by abdominal surgery so the best drug is here to we have to treat this patient uh with the metronidazole we now we have to see why we have to uh, you I mean treat this patient uh, the metronidazole only when compared to the cefalothin erythromycin and penicillin metronidazole mainly used as an important uh, anti protozoal agent as all you know is highly effective against anaerobic bacterial infections also it's highly effective against anaerobic uh, uh, anaer anaerobic bacterial bacterial infections okay anaerobic bacterial infections uh, such as those uh, the infections caused by bacteria spe species it is the drug of choice um, for gastrointestinal strains of bacteroids and two other effective antibiotics like imipenem and uh, peperazol and tazobactam also can be used but bit costly affair and bacteroid species such as bacteroid fragilis commonly possesses beta lactamase enzyme produces beta lactamase beta lactamase enzyme which is mainly responsible for um, 
resistance to produce against penicillin and cephalosporins are uh, here the cephalosporin that is cephalothin has been given so this penicillins and uh, cephalothins may give resistance because of this particular beta lactamase production and erythromycin actually is not indicated erythromycin is not indicated in the, in the treatment of bacteria species because the based on this um, uh, uh, root of uh, the site of action uh, the erythromycin mainly get concentrated in the respiratory secretions when compared to the peritoneal secretions. So, the people would prefer to give erythromycin for the uh, intra-abdominal uh, uh, infections. Female with a 3 day fever presents with a headache, BP 90 by 60 millimeters of Hg, heart rate 114 uh, per minute and pinpoint spots developed distal to BP cough. Most likely organism is, as I would like to go further, there are four are there, one is Brucella abatus and uh, Brucella suis, Brucella anisiria meningitis and Staphylococcus aureus. See the baby is suffering with headache and uh, low blood pressure, heart rate is high and pinpoint spots distal to the BP cough. See here, if you see in case of uh, Brucella abatus, Brucella abatus and Brucella suis are they are not primarily the human diseases. They are not the uh, human diseases. And uh, of course, they may cause for uh, the undulant fever, undulant fever, undulant fever, but reproduced by Brucella melitensis. Melitensis. So, we will explore that and Neisseria meningitis causes for meningitis, it causes for meningitis, especially acute pyogenic meningitis is produced. So, while diagnosing this acute pyogenic meningitis case, what we do is, we do the tourniquet test, tourniquet test and if you apply this tourniquet, and uh, distal to the BP cuff. So, if you uh, tie the cup, uh, this uh, biceps area, then distal to that, you can see a kind of spots, petechial spots, you can see like this, a petechial spots are seen. These parts are like uh, pinpoint petechial spot because of um, uh, because of the uh, fragility of the blood vessels and all. You can see the uh, this kind of uh, pinpoint spots. This is a typical presentation of uh, meningitis produced by Neisseria meningitis. So this is a nothing but a tourniquet test. This tourniquet test, which can be done for. Uh, the diagnosis of acute pyogenic bacterial meningitis produced by Neisseria meningitis and Staphylococcus aureus also is not related to that particular uh, thing. Usually the Staphylococcus aureus may cause for uh, chronic uh, brain abscesses and it will not uh, show this kind of, uh, 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 this kind of uh, features with uh, uh, meningitis. Old child suffering with signs of meningitis with fever and petechial rash. CSF examination is suggestive of bacterial meningitis. Petechial rash, CSF examination is suggestive of bacterial meningitis. And uh, signs of meningitis is also present. What could be the most probable organism causing this meningitis? See, the age is 10 years. The age is um, 10 years. And uh, the petechial rash is present, fever with petechial rash and uh, we have to see this, uh, I have to go as a commonest organism in this area, meningitis. But you may ask why, the, why not the streptococcus pneumoniae. Streptococcus pneumoniae produces uh, uh, the uh, meningitis uh, of course, but it's not that much common in this particular age group. And the petechial rash is the typical appearance of the typical presentation of the Neisseria meningococcal meningitis uh, and also uh, streptococcus, staphylococcus aureus 
is also not related to that and hemophilus influence also not related to that based on the age so in this particular age the commonest um, uh, meningitis pyogenic meningitis cause seen among the um, yeah, children age group uh, by is by the nigeria meningitis that too associated with the petechial rash no other are associated with petechial rash but there are some other um, uh, meningitis cases also there are the fevers also there associated with uh, petechial rash like rickett cell fevers but um, there won't be any signs of meningitis so the signs of meningitis with fever petechial rash first we have to think in terms of nisseria meningitis which of the following is the current preferred antimicrobial treatment for cutaneous anthrax b you all know that this anthrax is produced by the organism bacillus anthracis bacillus anthracis and which is an important zoonotic disease right it's very important zoonotic disease now we will see what is the drug of choice for cutaneous anthrax because there are three types of anthrax are there one is cutaneous anthrax one is cutaneous anthrax uh, number two is gastrointestinal anthrax and number three is pulmonary anthrax pulmonary form so among all these this is very very dangerous this is very dangerous form of um, anthrax so anyhow the, what is the drug of choice for now the cutaneous anthrax which is also known as uh, malignant pustule this is also known as malignant malignant pustule okay malignant pustule so one is uh, um, so, so, uh, am aminoglycoside and uh, number uh, two is ciprofloxacin number uh, c c is a penicillin and four uh, d is tetracycline so yeah here i would like to uh, go with uh, the ciprofloxacin and you may ask why uh, the penicillin is not being taken up even though the organism is grab positive bacilli see the penicillin g first i will start with penicillin penicillin g was uh, considered to be the first choice of treatment for the patients with uh, cutaneous anthrax and when used uh, should be continued for uh, 7 to 10 days it has to be given 7 to 10 days uh, so because some naturally occurring isolates have been reported to be penicillin resistant but the, those the but they are sensitive to uh, ciprofloxacin that means the, the strains which got resistance to penicillin are showing, showing resistance sensitive to penicillin and some patients are allergic to penicillin also ciprofloxacin is now considered to be the drug of uh, choice for cutaneous anthrax and ciprofloxacin belongs to the family as you all know that quinolins as a fluorine uh, uh, fluorinated uh, uh, quinolone it has greater antimicrobial activity but uh, low toxicity and is able to achieve uh, uh, clinically useful levels in the blood tissues uh, compared to non fluorinated uh, quinolins uh, they act uh, against many gram positive and gram negative bacteria by inhibiting uh, bacterial dna synthesis by inhibiting dna synthesis they inhibit bacteria this is most important the mechanism of action of the ciprofloxacin is by inhibition of dna uh, synthesis uh, uh, so, so despite the use of antibiotics in the treatment of anthrax clinically manifested inhalational anthrax is usually fatal as you know and if anthrax is suspected public uh, health authorities should be noted immediate notified immediately aminoglycosides and tetracyclines have uh, different mechanisms of action and have uh, preferred uses in other disease states uh, than the um, the in, than in uh, this particular uh, conditions the their critical uh, clinical uh, usefulness has uh, declined with the advent of uh, cephalosporins and quinolones tetracyclines also inhibit bacterial protein synthesis um, but uh, they can inhibit the protein synthesis but uh, they do so by inhibiting the binding of um, amino acyl transfer rna uh, to the 30th subunit of bacterial ribosomes that is the mechanism uh, but here in case of ciprofloxacin simply 
uh, it inhibits the it blocks the dna gyrase it inhibits the dna gyrase whereas uh, the tetracyclines will um, uh, inhibit their uh, 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 inhibit the by inhibiting the amino acyl transfer rna to the 30s subunit of bacterial ribosomes and thereby it inhibits the bacterial uh, multiplication so whatever it is is the finally the ciprofloxacin is the drug of uh, uh, choice because of so many advantages for the penicillin 11th one bacillus anthracis is unique to the other bacteria it is the only bacteria to possess uh, which of the following so only back to which of the following see here very um, straight question that is uh, a polypeptide uh, capsule, a polysaccharide uh, uh, capsule, uh, lipopolysaccharide in its outer wall and uh, tachyic acid and uh, exotoxin. And here, the, as you all know that the, the virulent forms of bacillus anthracis uh, causing the, uh, causes the anthrax are more likely to be surrounded by a capsule. As you all know that this surrounded by a capsule a big capsulated bacteria as you all know that this capsule is made up of uh, polypeptide so made up of polypeptide uh, composed of a polymer of glutamic acid and is a unique feature of bacillus anthracis uh, lipopolysaccharides next one is lipopolysaccharides uh, this is nothing but the lipopolysaccharides and nothing but endotoxins and the gram negative bacteria are unique to the gram negative bacteria. Bacillus anthracis is gram positive bacteria, right? This is gram negative bacteria, but this is gram positive bacteria. This bacillus is gram positive bacteria. In addition, whereas B, uh, I mean bacillus anthracis is associated with both tachyic acid and uh, potent exotoxin these are not unique features uh, for this bacterium other uh, gram positives like staphylococci release exotoxins and have their uh, tachyic acid in their cell walls also so here if you see the capsule uh, here, uh, the, is mainly prepared of polypeptide uh, uh, substance which is highly virulent uh, capsulated material so uh, sorry here the answer is uh, a not the b so the polypeptide the bacillus consists of this the unique feature of this particular bacteria where the uh, capsule is prepared with uh, polypeptide of course this polysaccharide capsule seen in case of pneumonia or pneumococci you can see the this one in pneumococci pneumococci you can see this polysaccharide capsule of course, this exotoxin and uh, any gram positive bacteria may have this tachyic acid in their cell wall and uh, they can produce exotoxins, right? So, that is the unique feature. Polypeptide capsule is a unique feature of bacillus anthracis. Then, which of the following is false about TB test turnaround time? Turnaround time means uh, the time taken for uh, getting the results. Uh, once you hand over the clinical sample to the laboratory, that is a turnaround time. So, in this turnaround time, what is the following is the positive for this uh, turnaround uh, time? Uh, yeah. CB NAT in 3 days. CB NAT within 3 days. And LJ medium, that's low stem Jensen's medium, which is a conventional culture medium for the tuberculosis, is 6 to 8 weeks. And uh, back tech, 2 to 3 weeks. And line probe assay, that is LPA means line probe assay. So these are the few methods uh, will be done for diagnosis of tuberculosis. Among three, which has got less time to get report? See, the LJ medium 6 to 8 weeks is correct because conventional method we have to uh, culture them and if growth occurs within 6 months, 6 weeks, okay, otherwise we have to wait for 8 weeks also. Even back tech also, 2 to 3 weeks we have to wait and LPA 2 days we have to wait. 
But in case of CB NAT, that is cartridge based, cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test. So, cassette, cassette based nucleic acid amplification test. This will take 1, 2, 3 hours maximum. Not this through 1 to 3 hours maximum that is the turnaround time is 1 to 3 hours only not the 3 days right so that's why this is the false answer given here so cbnet the report report will be given 1 in 3 hours lj medium 6 to 8 hours back tech 2 to 3 hours lpa 2 hours so all these statements are correct now True about the IGRA, this uh, interferon gamma releasing assay in uh, TB diagnosis, uh, which one is um, the correct uh, option we have to see now. Yeah. See, uh, interferon gamma releasing assay, it is mainly produced by the synthesized T lymphocytes. Once the person is infected with the TB, uh, tuberculosis, the, uh, the T lymphocytes will get uh, sensitized uh, by means of uh, um, delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction and this T sensitized T lymphocytes uh, indicative of the level of uh, uh, disease or infection by the tuberculous bacilli. So here the true is first one is the first generation quantiferent TB gold with uh, ES86. -E and second generation quantiferon TB gold with ES6 and CFP10 and useful for uh, useful to distinguish between mycobacterial tuberculosis and bovis and the NTM won't give positive reactions. So here the true is first generation quantiferon TB gold with uh, uh, ES80 there is a kind of protein present in this bacteria with ES80 uh, 6 antigen. Uh, so this is the right answer. And uh, this can't be differentiated between mycobacterium uh, tuberculosis and bovis, and non-tuberculous mycobacteria won't give uh, um, uh, won't give positive reactions. So this definitely we can uh, rely on this particular um, test, but it can't differentiate whether it is mycobacterium tuberculosis or bovis. But um, in case of uh, interferon gamma releasing us say. Uh, how we are doing is first generation quantifier and TB gold we are using by using the uh, we are doing by using the ESAT6 antigen. Our next one is the 14th one. Uh, this uh, a 12 years old child presents with the fever and uh, cervical lymphadenopathy. Oral examination shows a grey membrane on the right tonsil extending to the anterior pillar which of the following medium will be ideal for the culture of the throat swab uh, culture of the throat swab and uh, membrane also present gray membrane is present and age is 12 years throat swab for rapid identification of this pathogen so what to do see with this uh, clinical history age is 12 years and uh, the cervical lymphadenopathy is present and the gray membrane is present on right tonsil and uh, the uh, uh, then with this particular condition of course baby may be seeing like a toxic also in this condition most of the times I may suggest it may be a case of diphtheria it may be a case of diphtheria it is a case of diphtheria cervical diphtheria or pharyngeal diphtheria and uh, along with lymph nodes also there so if this is a case of diphtheria, diphtheria can't grow on nutrient agar because with diphtheria bacilli, this clostridium diphtheriae, clostridium diphtheriae is, sorry, cornibacterium diphtheriae is a fastidious organism, so it can't grow on the nutrient agar. And the next one is it can grow the uh, blood agar, uh, but on the blood agar, um, this typical morphology and other things can't be found out easily. And low flow serum slope, it's, uh, it shows the rapid growth. Within 6 to 8 hours, you can see the growth, rapid growth. And also, you can see their particular structures like metachromatic granules. Like metachromatic granules. 
these metachromatic granules are easily seen in this particular uh, uh, low flow serum slope and uh, it shows the rapid growth also and the LJ medium LJ medium is for the mycobacterium tuberculosis not for this coronary bacterium diphtheria I hope you understand yeah I hope you understand uh, what is the importance of this particular uh, uh, case scenario so it's a case of yes remember always when the gray a gray colored membrane present on the right tonsil or in fascial area you have to think in terms of uh, coronary bacterium uh, diphtheria and the disease diphtheria which is a fastidious organism which requires uh, I mean uh, fastidious uh, or enriched media among them low flow serum slope is the one which shows the rapid growth for this particular bacterium is most accurate for prevention and treatment of coronary bacteria and diphtheria and uh, of course uh, mm, if you see this um, the most important uh, thing is antimicrobial therapy for prophylaxis only antimicrobial uh, therapy antitoxin and toxoid and antitoxin only and um, DPT booster doses only which of the following is most accurate for prevention and treatment not only for prevention see for the prevention we can go for the vaccine for prevention we go for the vaccination but if already a patient is suffering with the disease we have to go for treatment so why the person is suffering with the disease because of the toxic effects because of the toxin effects what are the toxins responsible for this one that is diphtheria toxin diphtheria toxin these bacteria won't invade the tissues and produce the disease this coronary bacterium diphtheria releases the toxin and this toxin is responsible for all clinical manifestations so this toxin is not amicable for the antibiotics it is not amicable for the antibiotics then what to do we have to do the symptomatic treatment at that particular time and you, we have to suppress the further uh, release of the toxin by the uh, living bacteria bacteria already which are living in the body so to kill those bac bacteria which are already uh, ready to produce the toxin we have to give antimicrobial therapy no doubt antimicrobial therapy to be given then why we have to give antitoxin we have to give antitoxin to neutralize the toxin to neutralize the toxin to neutralize the toxin we have to give the uh, the, the antitoxin also and then why toxoid has to be given to avoid that means the baby is preferable uh, sorry the sensitive to the um, uh, this particular diphtheria so are susceptible for this diphtheria uh, even though you, uh, you treated the present condition there is possibility for recurrence of the disease or reinfection with the, uh, this particular bacterium so uh, unless you give the tetanus toxoid vaccine with complete doses then again the baby may be uh, um, susceptible for this particular kind of infection that's why uh, in this particular case we have to give the antimicrobial therapy and antitoxin for the earliest recovery and uh, the toxoid uh, uh, DPT vaccine to be given to avoid the further attacks uh, the, the few of the uh, uh, MCQs from uh, uh, bacteriology yes, in future also will prepare this kind of things and so that um, uh, it will be helpful for you somehow thank you